BrainWorks is made possible with generous support provided by Seattle Children's, delivering compassionate care while advancing new treatments and cures through pediatric research. Learn more at seattlechildrens.org. Brainworks. 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 The show where we learn all about the brain. With me, Noggin the Brain. In this episode, we learn all about concussions and what every kid, parent, and coach needs to know. Welcome to BrainWorks. My name is Eric Chudler. I'm a neuroscientist in the Department of Bioengineering at the University of Washington. I'm also the executive director of the Center for Sensory Motor Neural Engineering. What all that means is that I'm really interested in learning about the brain. Hi, I'm Ben. Did you know the brain only weighs about three pounds? Hi, I'm Pearl. Did you guys know there are 100,000 miles of blood vessels in the brain? Hi, I'm Micah. Did you know that the brain has about 100 billion nerve cells? Hi, I'm Jenna. All those nerve cells use electrical and chemical signals to talk to each other. Hi, I'm Jaden. Guess what? A jellyfish doesn't even have a brain. But here's another brain fact. Did you know that concussions are one of the most common kinds of brain injuries? In fact, between 1.5 and 3.5 million people suffer sports-related concussions every year in the United States. Concussions are no laughing matter, so we wanted to find out more. We'll talk to an expert at Seattle Children's Hospital. We'll run our own experiment. We'll learn how to tell if you have a brain injury. We'll talk to someone who's had a concussion and we'll find out how to keep our brains safe. But first, we're gonna start with what we know. How many of you know someone who has suffered a concussion? My brother had a concussion during track. He was playing tag with some of his friends and they hit heads while they were running. Afterwards, I remember he was really foggy and dizzy and confused. Anybody else? My sister was playing in a soccer game and her and a member from another team went up for a header and they hit heads and she had a minor concussion. Yeah. Most people think that it's only in football that you get a concussion, like tackling or two players hitting heads, but it's fairly common in other sports. You can get a concussion from skateboarding or skiing or snowboarding or even playing basketball or volleyball. You can even get a concussion from falling down while playing with friends. Football has the most concussions of any sport. Which sport comes in second? Girls soccer, boys wrestling, or boys ice hockey? Stay tuned after the break to find out the answer. BrainWorks is made possible with generous support provided by Seattle Children's, delivering compassionate care while advancing new treatments and cures through pediatric research. Learn more at seattlechildrens.org. Football has the most concussions of any sport. Which sport comes in second? Girls soccer, boys wrestling, or boys ice hockey? The correct answer is boys ice hockey. We wanted to find out more about concussions. So we came to Seattle Children's Hospital to talk to one of the leading experts in the field. It's brainstorming time! So Dr. Brown, what exactly is a concussion? A concussion is where your brain moves within the skull. So when you're moving quickly in one direction and all of a sudden your body stops, the brain continues to move. I can show you guys on this model. What we learned from Dr. Browd is that the brain doesn't sit right up against the skull. It's surrounded by spinal fluid. And inside the skull, there are bumps and some rough edges. If the brain gets knocked around, it can hit some of those bumps. And if it does it with enough force, then sometimes you can get a concussion. So what happens right after you get a concussion? So some people will immediately get a headache. Some people will have loss of, of memory. They won't know exactly where they are. A concussion is basically like a bruise on your brain. And if it's serious, it can cause permanent damage. The other things we'll do when you're on the sideline is we'll check brain function. And so we'll see how your eyes move. So if somebody's just had a concussion and I'm having you do that, 
when you get out to the very edge, your eyes will start to flutter like this. And that's a pretty good sign that they might have had a concussion. And those are people that we would say, you're done for the day. Dr. Rod, can you tell us about the high-tech helmets you're developing? So we started to look at football helmets. And football helmets go back about 100 years, and the first helmets were just leather. And then over time, leather became plastic. Even in the last 20 years, there hasn't been a lot of change in the way the helmets have been made. And working with some very brilliant engineers in the mechanical engineering department at the university, we've developed a new helmet, and we've been able to take the technology outside of the university and are starting to build up um, a company that is called Vices to make these football helmets. And we think the helmet, uh, and we demonstrated in the lab, it absorbs more force. Thank you for taking your time to share with us, Dr. Brown. Oh, it's my pleasure. Welcome back anytime. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Concussions can happen in all kinds of situations. So how do we know if someone has one? Next, we speak to a specialist who teaches us what to look for. In 2009, the state of Washington was the first in the country to pass a sports-related concussion law. It's called the Zachary Lystead Law. Which means if a player gets a concussion, they must see a medical professional before entering back into the game. So we talked to Andrew Little, who is from the Seattle Children's Hospital. Hi, Andrew. What is it about concussions that parents, players, and coaches should look out for when a player suffers a head injury? Yeah, the Zachary Lysted Law is, is, such a, is such an important law. It was, it was passed years ago, and it's, it's about creating awareness about brain injury. It's about creating awareness about a situation that can happen, and, and we want to make sure that sports are safe for everybody. We want to we want to make sure that even a, a, a slight jolting blow to the head or to the neck or to the body, any of that can be a concussion. But we want to make sure that we create awareness and that everybody is safe in sports. Uh -huh. well, we've got Micah over here, and what we'd like you to do with Micah is just pretend that Micah maybe was playing soccer and he bonked heads with someone else and uh, another player. How would you diagnose whether he should keep on playing the game or whether he should come out of the game? How would you diagnose if he's had a concussion or not? Well, the most important thing to notice and to, and to follow when, when evaluating for concussion is we want to make sure we recognize the situation. The first thing that I always ask all of our, all of our little kiddos and all of our kids that, that have suffered any type of injuries, do you remember what happened? Well, I was playing soccer and I, I hit heads with somebody else. And how are you feeling right now? I uh, have a little bit of a headache. You have a little bit of a headache? So on a scale of zero to six, six being like the worst thing you can think of, that's a severe, uh, four and a five are pretty moderate, one or two are kind of mild. You said you had a headache, how would you rate that zero to six? A two. Two, and do you have any pressure in your head? Yeah. Yeah, um, is it in that same spot or is it in a different spot? It's in the same spot. Okay, and do you have any neck pain or anything? No. Okay. And do you notice any sensitivity to the light? It's not a really bright day today, but is, is there any problem with that? No. So with the symptoms that he's presented here, would you recommend that he sit out of the game? Yeah. Or? Anytime that an athlete presents in this type of a situation, they immediately remove from play. So what I want you to try to do is focus your eyes just on my fingertips. So once Andrew determined Micah had a concussion, he then gave him a balance test. Is that bothering you at all today? Did that make your headache worse? an eye test, and a memory test. Elbow, apple, carpet, saddle, bubble. What's the words back? Elbow, apple, carpet, saddle, bubble. Good, we're gonna do it two more times. Thank you for teaching us more about concussions, Andrew. Thank you for having me. Dr. Browd talked to us about how important it was to wear helmets to protect our brain. We wanted to test it out for ourselves. We're going to do an experiment just to show how essential they are. We're calling it our egg head experiment. We're going to pretend that these eggs are our heads and the eggs inside are our brain. The question now is how to protect them. We've got a box full of recycled materials. Let's see what we can build. No problem. I'm going to use this bubble wrap and that paper towel. I'm going to use the bubble wrap and the carton of milk. Excellent idea, Pearl. Ah, you're gonna use those. Done. Stay tuned. Later in the show, we'll find out how our eggs did during our experiment. 
As we've heard, wearing a helmet is very important. And what's just as important is making sure that helmet fits properly. Still to come on BrainWorks, we find out how to make sure that our helmets fit correctly. How many children are seen daily in emergency rooms for sports-related injuries? 8,000, 800, or 80,000? Stay tuned after the break to find out the answer. BrainWorks is made possible with generous support provided by Seattle Children's, delivering compassionate care while advancing new treatments and cures through pediatric research. Learn more at seattlechildrens.org. How many children are seen daily in emergency rooms for sports-related injuries? 8,000, 800, or 80,000? The answer is 8,000. <laughs> now we know what causes a concussion, but what does it feel like to have one? We wanted to talk with someone who's had one to help us understand better. Hi, Leslie. My name's Eric Trudler. Welcome to BrainWorks. Uh, you're head coach of the women's soccer team here at the University of Washington. I am, 22 years and counting. Yeah. So what's it like dealing with a player that suffered a head injury on the field? It's always a little bit frightening, to be honest. A head injury uh, or a spinal injury are probably the two worst injuries that you can have in any sport or any activity. So you have to treat them with extra care and caution, and we certainly follow that protocol here at the UW. Uh, do they do uh, take them out of the game immediately, or exactly what happens during play? Yeah, it, it depends. First of all, the, the officials on the field are very well versed, especially in this day and age. They've become more educated on head injuries. And any time there's either head-to-head -head contact or a player hits their head on the ground, the goal post, or a ball hits him in the head, they will call timeout immediately, and they will bring our trainer onto the field. Time out! Let's go over that again. Here are some of the reasons you can be taken out of play during soccer. Head to head, head to goal post, head to ground, and head to ball. Sometimes soccer balls can hit players' heads at speeds of 63 miles an hour. That's a fast ball. Oh, 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 oh. And the American Academy of Pediatrics found that contact that happens during soccer play is at the same level as boxing, football, ice hockey, lacrosse, rodeo, wrestling, and field hockey. Now let's head back to the coach. Well, I know that you've brought one of your ex-players to BrainWorks. Yep, uh, hey, kids, and Sarah, come on over. So uh, we understand that while you were playing, you suffered a couple of concussions. Mm -hmm, I did. So what did it actually feel like when you were playing, and, and what actually happened? So the interesting thing about concussions is, as a player, you, you always feel like you're kind of okay because you don't see blood. You don't see – your bones don't hurt, but you just kind of feel a little off. So especially as you get more and more competitive, it's really hard to – to realize that you know my brain's not working right, I feel a little fuzzy, I feel a little dizzy. So that's kind of what the important part of the trainers and the coaching staff is. Now we heard from coach that sometimes players go head to head or mm -hmm. head to goal post or head to ground. In your case, what was the contact? Um, mine was, was a lot of head to ball or, or arm to head. Um, never really, a little head to head, but never really head to post. Um, but it, it was just kind of a thing that a lot of times it it happened over and over again, so it led to, to that sort of big, big hit, big concussion. Yeah. And you, when you came out, did you stay out for weeks or days? Or Yeah, there was um, a period of time where I was out for a few weeks, actually. And then there was a period of time where I was out for a couple months. So um, it just depended on the severity of it and, and kind of how quickly my symptoms went away. Uh -huh. What does it feel like to have a concussion? Um, you just sort of feel off. Everything's moving a little slow. You're kind of reacting to things a little bit differently. Sometimes you have a pretty bad headache, but that's not always um, a necessity to, for a concussion, but it usually goes with it. You just feel a little slow. So you had a lot of rest to help you recover. Yeah, I actually um, missed a couple weeks of class. Um, pretty much the advice I got was go in your room, turn the light off, and, and rest, because just like anything, your brain needs rest, so you, you just try to sleep as much as possible and keep the screen time to minimum or, or nothing, depending on the severity of it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining You're us, You're welcome. Coach. Our pleasure. Thank you, thank Sarah. You. Yeah. Thank you. 
looks like everyone built a helmet to protect their egg brain. Let's see how it would have protected a real brain. So our helmets are all built now. Now it's time to test them to see if they actually protected the brain inside. Jaden, here goes yours. That didn't sound so good. Whose is this? That was mine. All right, Ben, here goes yours with a spin. Whose is this one? Mine. Jenna, here goes yours. And how about this one? Mine. Here goes yours, Micah. And last but not least, whose is this? Mine. Don't tremble it. Here goes Pearls. Let's go check them out. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Excellent, everyone. Excellent. After our experiment showed us how important it is to have head protection, we decided we needed to get some helmet tips. We're here at the Cascade Bicycle Club. We wanted to start right at the top. How do you properly fit a bicycle helmet? We're here with Cassini Samani, a certified bicycle instructor who works with the Cascade Bicycle Club. Welcome to BrainWorks. Welcome, thank you. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi. So how do I know if my helmet fits correctly? So that's a great question. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your helmet is the correct size. Secondly, you want to make sure that you're putting it onto your head properly. So of course, you want it to be forward, like so. And there's an adjustment dial in the back. Oftentimes helmets will have an adjustment dial just to make sure that you get the right fit for your helmet. So this one, right is tight and left is loose. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten the dial all the way to the right like so, so it's snug on your head. So if you were to bend over while just the adjustment dial was tightened, your helmet should not be able to fall off and that's how you know it's on snugly. So the first way we make sure that your helmet is fit correctly is you look up with your eyes and make sure you can see the edge of your helmet right there. Can you see it? Yeah. Awesome. So that way you know that your helmet's far enough down on your forehead so that it will protect your forehead in the case of a crash or collision. The second thing you want to do is make sure that the side straps are adjusted right beneath your earlobes. So if your hair is covering your ears or if you have a scarf, as you do, you can put your fingers right beneath your earlobes so the fitter knows, all right, both straps should be right beneath the earlobes. That way we make sure that your helmet won't shift from side to side. The very last thing we do is check to make sure your strap is adjusted correctly. So go ahead and buckle your strap. There's a chin guard there so you won't be pinched. There you go. And you shouldn't be able to put your whole hand in there. So if you try and get just a few fingers in, there you go. That's how you know it's snug enough. You can also check by opening up your mouth. And if you can feel your two straps pull down, you know it's snug enough. How do I know if my helmet's the right size? That's a great question. So helmets come in lots of different sizes. And when I'm fitting a helmet for someone, I like to eyeball their head and think about what helmet should I grab and try and fit on top of them. One important thing to note is that everybody's head is shaped differently, so it's hard to guess right off the bat what size will fit you. It's important when you're fitting a helmet for the person to be there so that you have the exact fit that they need. Where can I buy a helmet? That's a great question too. So when you're thinking about buying a helmet, First things first, you want to buy one that's new. And the reason for that is, if you buy a used helmet, you have no idea what the person went through with that helmet. It could have gotten in a crash, or the, the safety of it could have been compromised. So when you get a new helmet, you want to make sure it's certified by either CPSC, which is an acronym for the Consumer Product Safety Commission, or ASTM, which stands for the American Society of Testing and Materials. And those are professionals who know that the helmet is safe for you to wear. Thanks for joining us here at BrainWorks. I think we've all learned a lot about concussions. Yep, we've learned that concussions are a serious brain injury that can seriously affect young, growing brains. If you think you have a concussion, please seek medical attention. And remember, recovery time can range from days to weeks to even months, so don't rush it. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time for BrainWorks. See you. Remember, protect it. It's the only one you've got.